Ron Dennis. I'm the Republican nominee running for the Congressional seat in the 8th uh, District here in uh, San Francisco. Um, I won the Republican primary. Um, uh, we, uh, were, we raised a decent amount of money ourselves. We raised about $600,000 in the Republican primary. But we were out raised 3 to 1 and uh, still uh, managed uh, to win. Uh, had a very enthusiastic um, volunteer base. Excited. We uh, covered. Uh, okay, no worries. We covered the uh, we covered the precinct. I think Republicans were sick of hearing my name. By the time then, that was over because we just hit them over and over and over, and they had no choice but to vote for me. So, um, you know, the, the interesting thing about this primary is, is most of you know I'm a Liberty Republican. I'm in the Libertarian wing of the party, and um, uh, I you know I didn't shy away from that. In fact, I, you know I, I sold it as an asset in the in, in the primary. And that included positions like pro-legalization of marijuana, um, you know, ending the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, uh, pro-civil liberties. And I think that these uh, positions are going to come in handy um, move, moving forward from now. The party accepted me on, on, you know, on those positions, and, um, and you know, we, we, we came out the other side. So um, this is where we are today. And in terms of um, how we're going to win, the first thing we have to have is, is the message. And, uh, the message in, uh, in direct respect to Nancy Pelosi, because the truth is, is that she's the known entity. This is a referendum on her run here. What has she done? Who is she? And will they do better by having someone, will the voters here do better by having someone like me represent them? And um, if you look at the issues, you know, I find that as, as I get deeper into this, that Nancy Pelosi is not who most people think she is. She's not who the folks on the left think she is. Um, what we find is, is that these folks go to Congress and they um, become representatives from the district and not necessarily for the district. I mean, if they represented the district, for example, in a, in a district that is overwhelmingly against staying in Afghanistan, why has Nancy Pelosi not done one single thing to stop it? And in fact, she actually voted on July 1st, she voted in a closed vote 215 to 210 to continue funding the war. This is the woman who, um, got through health care, which was the goal of, uh, of progressives since Teddy Roosevelt, if she put the kind of muscle behind ending Afghanistan, as she did put behind the health care reform, it would be over like that. It's an, it, the war doesn't make any sense at this point. There's no al-Qaeda there. I don't know what we're doing there. The troubles that those folks will have, they're going to have anyway. But right now, all we're fighting for is leverage. And uh, I'm not willing to send one more bereavement letter to a family who's going to lose uh, someone so that we can have better leverage at the re reconciliation table in July of 2011. So that's sort of my, my hot issue at the moment. I'm also realizing, everything everyone realizes, I, I heard you talking to like, the fire room, um, and um, we, uh, we have to cut spending across the board in government. There's just no way around it. So the question is, is where are we going to cut the spending? Um, I think entitlements are off the table, you don't touch them, you can't go anywhere near them. But there are plenty of other areas where the federal government overspends. The one area that I sold and talked about in the Republican uh, primary was uh, our overseas bases. We have 700 plus bases in 130 countries around the world. I am not so sure that they make us safer. I'd like to do a review just like we did a review of every single base that we had domestically at the end of the Cold War in 1990. Right. We closed bases. I want to ask the questions, do we need the base in Zambia? Do we need the base in Bulgaria? Do we need the base in Crete? Do we need the be in Okinawa 65 years after the end of the war, Second World War? We have tough times ahead of us. We're borrowing four, 40 cents of every single dollar. Do we need the empire? Um, so in order, to, in order to continue to fund folks here on the things that they need, we are going to I need to make those kinds of decisions. I'm also ter I'm terribly uncomfortable with where we stand on civil liberties right now. We've lost habeas corpus. We are continuing to be warrantlessly wiretapped. Um, Nancy Pelosi knew that the NSA was warrantlessly wiretapping us at an 18T building in Folsom Street going back to 2000 prior to 9-11. And she's done nothing to stop it. So these are the kinds of questions I'm going to ask her. We're going to put together the campaign. I think that um, that will give us the, uh, the chance. I guess since we're, nobody else is here, can we go a little longer? Yeah. OK, <laughs> thanks. Um, one, in terms of actually, so those are, that's the sort of the messaging that we're going to go with. In terms of, um, uh, to yeah, to get out the vote and winning votes, there are a lot of votes to win. I mean, a lot of people who understand what I'm saying is true. Nancy Pelosi doesn't represent them. 
She says that she represents them, but look at her actions. She's just become another corporatist in Washington, D.C. We still have corporations getting corporate welfare. She's fought for the bailout for the banks. She fought for the bailout for the insurance companies. Uh, she fought to pat out the big auto businesses. She's right there with them, still in the locks of them. What we've seen, I think, in this last election is that nothing changes in Washington, D.C., that once they get locked in, they continue to push the same agenda, that nothing, nothing changes. The wars go on, the bailouts for the big, big corporations go on, and people end up getting stuck. So, um, so we have the messaging, we're gonna have a huge volunteer base, we're leveraging everything online, we have new videos, we're going to, go to LA tonight to shoot three new videos. Um, we are uh, we have a new PR firm, we'll be on all the big news shows in September. Um, uh, we are having a big uh, uh, Principles Over Parties rally on uh, Labor Day weekend, September 4th. The three speakers at the rally will be Matt Gonzalez, me and Ron Paul. Uh, we're expecting between five and 7,000 people there for that. Um, we'll actually have a couple of other events throughout the day too, some fundraising tied into that and then after hours party. Um, so, um, so we have a lot of things on the schedule. We have a head campaign headquarters or a Columbus attorney. Um, you're going to hear a lot about the campaign. How much, uh, how much money are you going to raise? We've, we've raised about a quarter million dollars. Subject people to 